I'm going to try to speak without the microphone because I'm used to speaking with Ray Garcia. Can you hear me in the back? <laughs> I figured you could. Um, wow. Um, I, I met Ray many, many years ago. I, in fact, I feel like I know him long before 1982. Um, I actually know him while I was a graduate student at Arizona only in the sense that I worked on the organism that the jojobo bean, um, as a graduate student, I was, uh, was picking those beans in the desert near Tucson, Arizona, uh, for, because they thought this, this was going to be an amazing plant that would um, be used worldwide to save, you know, to replace oil or something. I, I, don't, I don't remember, but I was a, I picked, picked those things at that time, and so I sort of remember when Ray, when I met Ray and he told me what he was working on and that he was trying to see whether jojoba oil could help um, reduce the, the likelihood of high cholesterol or keep it under control. Um, I felt like I, I knew him from th that point on. Um, I knew from the very day, first day that we actually met in 1982 that we would be working together on a variety of different things. Um, his terrific sense of humor, his honesty, and his passion for students um, were characteristics that I probably admire most about him when I first met him. Um, we worked on many, many projects over the year. I'm going to try to keep it together here uh, by throwing in the humor every now and then. <clears throat> um, one of these projects included the Howard Hughes Biomedical Research Training Program. This was a program that was developed for freshmen and sophomores. I don't know, maybe some of you out there participated in it. Yeah, okay, great. Um, and we started that program. It still exists in some various forms. The name has changed many, many times over the years. And it was basically raised passion to try to convert pre-meds <laughs> and what have you into research science people and hopefully go on to graduate school, although he loved every, every one of his students, don't get me wrong, he appreciated all of you who went on to medical school and I appreciate all of, appreciate all of you that went on to medical school in the sense that many of you in these last few weeks really tried to do a lot for Ray and um, it's very, very appreciative. Anyway, um, he had the opportunity through this program to spread his passion for research, to involve students in, in um, a variety of different research experiences. We appreciated, um, we had set the program up so students would work together in teams. And um, we just basically gave them projects, or they found projects, and they worked together. And many of them went on to publish, went on to present uh, first place awards and many presentations that they gave. Um, and if Ray were here, I'm sure he's looking down at us right now, and I'm sure he's really proud of every one of his students that um, has gone on to do all the things that he, they've done. Um, we also team taught a lot of courses. And I, when I say team taught, I really mean team taught. We showed up for the entire time. These were like, um, four unit courses that were split between the two of us. So, I mean, even though we were splitting the units, we were doing all the work that was required for, um, as if we were the only ones teaching the course. We, we worked together on that. Probably our favorite course was NSS 101, the Introduction to Higher Education that was taught many years by the two of us. Um, we had a variety of different classes. We also had the opportunity to teach the EAP uh, Early Entrance Program 101 courses um, through NSS 101 when we started. Um, and I learned so much from interacting with Ray on a regular basis. Just, just so the stu students probably don't know this, but we started preparing these NSS 101s that we taught every fall quarter for the last uh, umpteen years. And then it became part of the Honors College, and we went our different ways at that point, at some point after the couple teachings of that. Um, but one of the things that we did, we started as soon as the spring quarter ended, we set up a regular 
um, monthly, uh, weekly meeting, not monthly meetings, <laughs> weekly meetings, um, four hours a week, where we would sit down and try to figure out, well, what are we gonna require these students to do in this class? What are the assignments gonna be? How, what are we going to uh, establish? And we met regularly um, until the fall quarter started. We basically had everything put together. We arranged for all the guest speakers well in advance of the uh, fall quarter starting. And um, a couple of things that I picked up from Ray as he taught this course with me was um, he's really an expert at commas. Nobody knows how to correct commas better than Ray. And I'm sure that this ex experience comes from his um, court reporting duties in the military. Um, you know, he, he used to tell students and he used to tell me to make sure that when we did this one exercise, which I'll tell you about in a minute, um, that um, to make sure that you mentioned that I took dumbbell English several times before I finally passed it. He wanted students to understand that he was just like our typical Cal State LA student, you know, lots of dreams and ambitions, and, and he managed to work really hard. He passed the English, and now, I mean, if you ever wanted a paper to be published, you want Ray to read it first for editorial comments and get it in the right format and put all the spelling and corrections together and everything and Ray was so good at that uh, I learned how to how to um, where commas belonged and where they didn't belong from from Ray I think I taught him how uh, about dangling participles that was my thing commas was his thing and after a while he started recognizing dangling participles that I didn't even recognize were dangling participles that shows you how quickly he picked up on these things we love teaching this course and one of the things that we did every every um, fall quarter was we had the, one of the earliest activities was to have the students pair up and then introduce themselves to the rest of the class. They, their pair would introduce the, the, the whoever they paired up with. But we paired up first and introduced ourselves to the thing. And one of the re things that Ray always asked me to talk about, because he was so proud of this, was that shining <laughs> the hair that he had on the top of his head. I was looking at these pictures over here and I can't, I've never seen Ray, I don't remember Ray with black hair. I mean, I'm sure I saw him with black hair, but uh, I always saw him with a white beard and, and a beautiful bald head that he was really proud of, um, those khaki pants that he always wore, and, the, and those, uh, and those um, Hawaiian t-shirts, or shirts that he always wore too, or, or pattern shirts, whatever. Um, he was so passionate about everything that we did in this class, um, he was passionate about. Um, we worked together, we fought like brother and sister half the time. I mean, we had disagreements a lot. Um, he claims that I followed him into the men's bathroom once because we were arguing about something. <laughs> I think it was the other way around. He followed me into the women's bathroom, but you know, I'll, I'll go with that. That's a possibility. Um, and I always thought Ray was younger than, I always thought I was older than Ray. It turns out that he was older than me. I always thought I was older because I, I came in 77, he came in 82. I figured I had to be older because how could he possibly have all this energy and, and all this passion for everything? And he actually um, made me even more passionate about learning and teaching than, than what I thought I was. Um, he loved his family. Donna, I mean, I remember him me meeting you once when you were little and Diana. Um, you know, in these late nights, and I apologize to both of you because I feel like I took valuable time away from him being at home with his family while we were sitting here trying to figure out how we were going to grade these uh, papers or, uh, you know, what criteria we were going to use to, to um, evaluate different components of the class. But he loved his family. He talked about you guys all the time, and he probably cared so much for everything that you did. And I... And he's so glad to be a grandfather, too. <laughs> that was one of the best things, experiences, is seeing you, you walk ahead. Um, um, in 2000, 2001, Ray was, uh, received the Outstanding Professor Award. Um, I can think of nobody that deserved that award more than Ray. In fact, it, I'm surprised that it took that long for us to recognize how valuable he was to our to our campus. He should have received the award when 
um, you know, long before then, but I'm, I'm glad he got it. He certainly deserved it, and he truly exemplifies what outstanding truly is. Um, Ray set up, um, helped me figure out how to retire. I retired um, two years ago, I guess. He retired the year before I did. And um, we were going to teach the Honors College 101 one more time, but we decided this was a good year to stop teaching that course and let somebody else handle it. And uh, so we thought about maybe, well, maybe we teach a, um, a um, combined uh, biochemistry, chemistry, microbiology, and biology in SS 101, where there, there were students from our majors that were in the class, because we, we, we were looking forward to doing that. But then Ray got sick, and so that changed. And I would never want to teach that course without Ray by my side, because it's so much fun when he was doing it. Um, I will mention one final thing. Um, uh, earlier this year, a couple of his students um, tried a, to do a cloning experiment of Ray. You've probably seen the pictures over there on the table. They got the bald head down correctly. They got the white beard. They got the, t the shirt, the Hawaiian shirt. They got the uh, khaki pants. What they didn't get, even though they're great students, and I, I admire both of them, they didn't get the uh, personality. <laughs> Ray is, um, it's hard to clone that. It's, it's just, it's part of his nature. Um, I see so many of his students out here. He'd be so happy to, to see this audience right now. I mean, I, I know he's looking down at us and thinking, wow, well, you guys should be enjoying this. I'm not feeling sad for me, but it's hard not to. I mean, I feel like I'm, I've lost my better half, to be perfectly honest with you. That's what I, I felt like ever since I, I, I learned of his departure. Um, I can't think of anybody more passionate, more demanding of students, as, as um, Scott already mentioned. He expected the best. And it sounded like, I mean, uh, you know, our standards were so high. His standards were so high. Um, we just wanted the very best. And I know that every one of his students who have gone on and done just wonderful, amazing things, um, they've gotten into all kinds of great careers. No matter what you're doing, he appreciates everything that each one of you has done. I'm sure he'd be thrilled to death to see everything that each of you have, have achieved over the years. And he stays in touch with his students, too. I'm sure many of you have talked to him since um, you left Cal State LA. So anyway, um, we're going to miss him. We're going to miss him a lot. Um, my best friend. I feel like I lost my best friend. I feel like I lost my brother. Um, and um, try to celebrate everything that he's done for you, for us.